All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, welcome. So what I've got is geometry, points, lines, and planes. I apologize, this will be a little bit of a long one, so if you need to fast forward through some of it, please feel free. The beginning part will be vocabulary, and the second part will be how we utilize the vocabulary. All right, so in basic geometry, we always start off with just a blank space. And then, of course, there has to be a point. Now that point that I labeled T is just a location in space. It's important to realize that it actually has no size. The only reason that there's this big dot right here is because I wanted you to be able to see where I wanted you to look. But the point itself has no size. Now, second is a line. Now, a line is made up of two points. Have you ever noticed that if you take a ruler, you can make one and only one line through a point? Now, in this case, I decided to label them A and B, and it extends in both directions forever. That's what these arrows mean on the end of the line. When I want to label it, I label it line AB. Notice the arrows on the top of both. That means that this line goes on and on in both directions forever. The third thing we want to talk to you about is a plane. Now, since a point was one point and a line was two points, a plane which extends in all directions is labeled with three points. If three points fit on one flat surface, it makes a plane. I always like to think of a plane not as an airplane, but more like a wall or a floor or a ceiling. Um, the front of your book would be a nice plane. A picture frame or a picture would be a nice frame. Uh, so there's lots of flat surfaces out there for you to be able to focus it, uh, for this. All right, now we showed you a line. What about a line segment? What's different? Well, it's only part of a line. A line goes on in both directions forever. And a line segment actually starts and stops. So in this case, A and B start and stop. So there are no arrows above this um, uh, symbol that represents the line because it starts and stops. There are no arrows. Now you may also have known about a ray. I know this because sun rays. It's a uh, part of a line that starts and then goes on forever in one direction, much like sun rays. Notice sun rays start at the one point and then go off into the universe forever. How do we label this one? Well, since it started at A, there's no arrow over A, and then because it goes on forever past B, there's an arrow past B. So, just a little bit of a quiz here for you. Can you name three points here? You got it, A, B, and C. Can you name two line segments? Line AB and line AC. Some people say, what about uh, CB? Well, I haven't drawn a line in between them, so we can't name that one yet. What about rays? There's two rays here. Did you say AB and AC? Good. And did you make sure that when you drew them that there was no arrow over the A? All right, well, we just created an angle because an angle is made up of two rays and or two line segments. And they always have an endpoint that's called the vertex. There's the vertex. It's the endpoints where the endpoints meet. All right, and why do we do this? Well, in case you haven't noticed, there's an inside of the angle and there's an outside of the angle. We're going to be focusing on the inside of the angle then this year. And we can write it several different ways. Notice I could call this angle 1 because 1 is on the inside of the angle. I could call this angle C, A, B because that surrounds the angle. And a lot of people say, well, why can't I just call it angle B, A, C? Because that surrounds the angle also. You can. Um, you're going to have to talk to your teacher about which way you would like them, or they would like you to be able to, um, to say it. I usually go with this one because it's alphabetical. B comes before C. And you could just call it angle A because there's only one angle coming off of these rays or these segments. All right, so this may be review. There's four different kinds of angles that we can talk about. The first one's a right angle. A right angle is a 90 degree angle. You'll notice that it is the perfect rect, oh, it would make a perfect rectangle if we shaded it. 
And you'll also remember that a box indicates that this is a 90 degree angle. If there's no box, you cannot say it's a 90 degree angle. It might be 89.9. Alright, so the next one's an acute angle. Now an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. Notice, there's a 90 degree angle, the acute angle fits fully inside of it. The next one is an obtuse angle. That's more than 90 degrees. How do you know that's more than 90 degrees? Well, once again, there's 90 degrees and there's more angle than 90 degrees. And next we have a straight angle. Now a straight angle adds up to 180 degrees. How do I know that? Well, once again, I use my 90. There's 90. What's on the other side? That's 90 also. And 90 plus 90 is 180. So a straight angle is 180 degrees. Okay, next, adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are angles that are right next to each other. Fancy way, they share a common side and vertex. Notice angles 1 and 2. They share a vertex and they share a common side. And they are adjacent. Angles 1 and 3 would be adjacent. Angles 2 and 4 would be adjacent. Angles 3 and 4 would be adjacent. But I hope you notice that angles 2 and 3 are not adjacent. Sure, they share a common vertex, but they do not share a common side. All right, vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are opposite each other. Notice that angle 2 and 3 are vertical angles. And angles 1 and 4 would also then be vertical. Vertical angles always equal each other, and that has the word that they are congruent. So, what would the measure of angle x be? Well, since 121 and angle x are vertical angles, and vertical angles always equal each other, x would equal 121. See how we can use this? We can even use this to practice our algebra because we know these two angles equal each other. So I could write the equation x plus 24 equals 33, which means that if I go minus 24 and minus 24, x equals 9. Now since right angles always add up to 90 degrees, how could I figure out what the missing value is? Well, angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. 57 plus, I don't know, equals 90 degrees. When I go minus 57 and minus 57, I end up getting my answer. And since straight lines always equal 180, I can use that also to make the equation. 122 and x equal 180. Minus 122 and minus 122, and x equals 58 degrees. Notice how I can make it even a little bit more tricky. Here's the equation. Why don't you see if you can solve it? Okay, I'm back. Notice that x plus 2x is 3x, and when I divide by 3 and divide by 3, x equals 30 degrees. And then the other angle would be 60, and 30 plus 60 equals 90. You guys, I'm back. All right, when I went minus 39 and minus 39, I got 2x equaled 141. I divided by 2 and I got x equals 70.5, or 70 and a half. Then, that would be it. All right, if you guys got questions, make sure to ask your teachers, and I hope you enjoyed this.